Today I'm going to show you how to do a simple desert arid kind of base, uh, similar to the one on this miniature here. Uh, it's about six steps or so, I think just like the other one, and um, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and get started. So the first step is going to be to get your base that you want to do. I've put mine in a Citadel paint holder or miniature holder rather just to uh make it easier especially with no miniature on the base there's not a lot of not a lot to hold on to so i've put it in that and i'm going to start with the first color of steel legion drab and i'm just going to coat the entire base with a thin coat of steel legion drab uh, this will serve us for when we put the crackle medium on the base we won't see the black coming through. Um, it will also help the crackle medium adhere to the base. Um, crackle medium, how it works is the is it shrinks it, it shrinks as it dries rather, and so cracks form in it. Um, but when it shrinks, that means that there's less surface area of the medium now grabbing the base and if you just do it directly on the bare plastic uh, it has a tendency to flake off and we don't want that so as you can see I just covered the whole base with the steel legion drab doesn't have to be a pretty coat as you can see it's pretty streaky not a big deal so you just set that to dry and then we'll come back and do the next step all right after your base coat is dry uh, you want to move on to the next step and that is going to require two different colors it's going to be a ghrelin earth from Citadel and Sterling Mud from Citadel. Um, this is our crackle medium and this is just a normal texture paint and we're going to combine the two just so A, our base doesn't look super uniform because nature is not uniform and so that it gives us a nice working texture to, uh, to do some of our later steps. So I'm just going to go ahead and open both paints here. And I'm going to be going back and forth using them both. I'm going to start with the crackle medium. That's the agrelin earth. And I'm just going to put it in a pretty thick coat in just a couple places on the base. Um, as you can see, it's, it's bumping off the base. It's quite a thick coat. Um, you want to put some small patches, some th big patches. It's really up to you. You can do as much or as little of this as you want. Um, you can make the whole base crackle if you'd like. I personally am not a fan of that look, but you're absolutely entitled to do it. It's your base. Um, so after I've got a couple little patches on there, I'm going to move on to the uh, Sterling Mud. This is just our normal texture paint. And I'm just going to throw that basically everywhere else on the base. Um, and just make sure to blend it up right into the, the edges of the crackle medium, the Agrelin Earth we just used. This can be, again, as thin or as thick as you want. Uh, this really doesn't matter. There's texture in it. This will just decide what the depth of the base is. For the crackle medium, uh, the thicker you put it on, the th bigger your cracks will be. So if you want a bunch of very thin cracks, then you might want to put it on a little bit thinner. If you want big, like, earth-breaking cracks, then you want to put it on pretty thin, or thick, rather. Um, this will take a while to dry, uh, probably at least an hour. At, when it first starts to dry, you won't see anything. Uh, don't be alarmed. It is working. The crackle medium is working. Um, it takes a quite a bit of time to actually start to crackle. So once you do that, you leave it to dry, uh, at least an hour, possibly more. Um, if you're doing a bunch of bases though, if you're basing your whole army, for instance, this is not a big deal, as you can do one, move on to the next one. And then by the time you're done with the last one, your first one may be ready. Um, so yeah, we're going to let that dry, and then we'll come back and do step three. Alright, our crackle medium and texture paint is dried. And as you can see, I've got a nice variation. Some small cracks, some large cracks, and then the texture paint surrounding it. And right now, it looks really weird because the texture paint and the crackle paint are different colors. We're going to fix that right this second. And we're going to use my favorite sand color, Talarn Sand. And just going to coat the entire base with that. 
Um, you want to be careful. I've let this dry for quite a while now, but you want to be careful because these crackle chips can flake off if you're too rough with them. So you just want to be very careful when you're applying your base coats to them. You want to make sure to not have any chips. If you do have some chips, it's not the end of the world, um, but it will look a little weird, especially if it's a larger chip. Um, if that does happen, you can fix it by simply putting another dollop of crackle medium in that spot, leaving it to dry, and then coming back to this step. I think I've left this to dry long enough that I shouldn't encounter that issue, but sometimes I do get impatient and it will happen. Not a big deal though, just fix it real quick and come back to it. So once that Talarn sand is all laid down, uh, you can set it aside, let it dry, and then we'll come back and do the next step. Okay, once our full coat of paint is dry, we're going to move on to the next step, which is going to be the shade. Uh, this can be done with almost any color you want, depending on what color you want your desert to be. Uh, for me personally, I like the Skeleton Horde Contrast Paint. It's a dark enough brown that it shades in all the recesses and gets a good coverage, but it's light enough that it doesn't completely kill the brightness of our desert. So I'm just going to take this and I'm going to put it all over the base, making sure to not leave it in any thick puddles, and also making sure to get in all the cracks of that crackle medium. This will help later when we dry brush it to help give us that visual difference between the cracks and the raised areas. Just going to completely coat the base with this. And then in the places it's too thick, I'm just going to grab it with the brush, wipe the brush on a piece of tissue, and then come back in and grab it just so it's not coating it too much. But as you can see, it's gotten in all the crackle lines there, and it's shading the rest of the texture paint. But it, nowhere is it pooling, so we won't have any problems there. So we'll let this dry, probably... 15 20 minutes or so and then we'll come back and do the dry brush step all right now that our shade is all dry uh, we can move on to the dry brush and just like before with the shade this can really be done with any color you want depending on what color you want your desert i prefer a nice bright uh very dry looking desert so for that i'm going to use wraith bone from citadel and if you're not familiar with dry brushing, it's pretty simple. Um, you want to get a, you want to start with a completely dry brush. It can be ratty; it's not a big deal. Um, and you want to get paint loaded onto your uh, brush like this, and then you want to find a piece of tissue paper or paper towel or whatever, and you just want to wipe all of the excess paint off on the paper towel. And you want to do that until there's not a lot of paint left on the brush. You can still see there's some there, but not tons. Just enough so that when we go over this base, it will catch the raised surfaces on it. And we'll get a nice variation in color. I'm just going to do this all over. I'm going to make several passes because, like I said, there's not a lot of paint on this brush. So I'm going to make several passes to make sure that we get it all the places we want. And this is just touching the tops of the base, the tops of the texture paint and the crackles, just so that we have some shade, some base layer, and some highlight. So once you're happy with that, uh, your ba this will dry almost immediately by putting it on. I'm just going to grab some tufts and we will finish out the base. Alright, now that the dry brush is on there, like I said, it will dry almost immediately, but I gave it a couple minutes just in case. Um, we're going to add our tufts. So in this case, I'm going to be, you can use almost any tuft you want on here. Um, I prefer a more dead color though. So I'm going to be using these tufts that are from Army Painter. I believe these are Highland Tufts. They have sort of a, a reddish base color 
with a tan top. So I'm just going to take the tuft with a pair of scissors, tweezers, and I'm just going to put a little dollop of super glue on the bottom. These are allegedly self-adhesive, and they are a little bit sticky, but they don't stick as well as I would like. And then I'm just going to put the tuft where I want it on the base, push it down, and then I always like to take the whole tuft under my finger and push it. This not only helps the super glue adhere, but it helps to push the grass strands out in every direction so you don't have so you, your grass looks natural and then you just do this as many times as you like I think I'll add one maybe two more just grab another tuft with the tweezers put another little dollop of super glue on it you don't need a lot of super glue tiny dollop is fine and you just lay it somewhere else um, you can get even more advanced with this and put multiple types of tufts on this. In this case, I'm just doing the one type, just this Highland tuft, but you can absolutely use varying colors of tuft and that will give your base even more visual interest. So if you're up for that sort of thing, uh, the only thing I'm making sure to do is to not cover our crackle medium sections. Those are kind of like the star of the base and I don't want to cover those with a tuft. So I'm going to put this last one right here. And by putting it next to the crackle, it's drawing the eye to the crackle almost. This one's sort of hidden up there. It's kind of like a, a hidden treasure of the base. But this one, with these three tufts sort of around it, your eye is being directed to this. So even when the miniature is standing on it, and I'd probably put the miniature's feet about here and here probably, you'll see that nice crackle. And as you can see, it blends right in with the other texture paint. If you get real close, you can see that the texture paint here blends right into these small cracks and up here in the small cracks. And that's your base. Uh, the last thing to do would be to paint your base rim. Uh, in this case, for this army, I've chosen to paint it black. Um, there's different color tufts on this, but it's the same principle. As you can see, painted the base room black, stuck the miniature on, and the base looks great. So yeah, that's a simple arid desert type of base. You can get more complicated um, with things like molded sand dunes or um, pigment powder as your sand texture. But if you're doing a whole army, this kind of thing, besides the drying time, it's quick and easy, and it gets the job done. So with that, that's the end of this tutorial. Uh, thank you, everybody, for watching, and I will see you on the next one.